Hi everyone, this is Alex, Qualified Usui Reiki Master. Um, I'm going to give you a tutorial today on distance healing. This is taught in Reiki Level 2, and it is one of the parallel techniques used um, when you've got to that level. So what I recommend is when you have been taught the Reiki 2 symbols after your second Reiki attunement, you should meditate upon them daily. This will help you to make sure that you know how to draw the symbols and visualize them, but also name them correctly. That is of utmost importance to do a correct healing, both on yourself and on your patients. When you meditate, choose a quiet room where you won't be interrupted, light candles, burn incense, and play soft meditative music. You should start by emptying your mind and slowing down your breath. You could do different breath exercises or concentrate just on your breathing in and out. Make sure that it is not um, mechanical. Make sure it is a natural breath where you're not forcing it in or out. Um, I would start by asking for the greater good, which is what we usually do in Reiki before a healing. Um, you could say a prayer and ask for this so that you can perform the distance healing. Remember that you are a channel and the energy flows through you. And ask for this healing for either yourself or mention the patient's name who you are going to do the healing on. Adopt the mudra for prayer pose, which is the hands placed flat together with fingers extended. Um, how I've mentioned in my previous tutorials that you would draw a Reiki symbol with one hand. That's how you would have your hands but close together. And recite the five Reiki principles. I have another tutorial on that coming soon. Uh, visualize firstly the power symbol, Shoku Rei, and feel the flow of Reiki through your body. If you would like, you could also draw the Shoku Rei onto your hands and feet since you're going to be healing. Then visualize the harmony symbol, Seiheki, and ask your guides or the patient that your healings guides to show you where the energy blockage is. Now, distance healing means that you're healing yourself in the past or in a past life, and sometimes even in the future, or a patient that is not in direct contact with you, therefore either sitting far away from you in the same room or in a different place altogether. You could be healing them at the present moment or in their past or future or even past life as well. So once you have done the first two symbols and you have identified the energy blockage that you're going to be working on, this energy blockage could be an emotional trauma, a phobia, um, unbalanced karma in a previous life. It could be many things. But if you ask to be shown it, you should see a vision or get a gut instinct about it. Or you could simply, if you are in contact with your patient by phone or email, or they are in the same room as you, but just at a distance, you could ask them about it before the healing. Finally, send the distance healing symbol to the blockage and pray for healing. A further exercise that you could do to make sure that the healing is more powerful is to talk to, let's say that you're doing the healing on yourself. You do the same exercise procedure if you are healing the patient, but um, the patient is the center focus. So if you want to heal, let's say an old bad memory that is attached to an emotional trauma, you would talk to the you that was there at the time of the blockage. So, for example, if I wanted to heal a bad memory that happened to me five years ago, I, myself now in the present, would talk to myself five years ago at the time the trauma happened. Be gentle, give your old past self advice, forgive them, 
and ask them to forgive themselves and anybody who is attached to that situation. Um, just be gentle with yourself. Be very forgiving and very loving and compassionate because that's what you need um, in a situation for healing to occur. Uh, then ask yourself at that time to imagine an alternative past, present or future. So imagine a scenario before that particular uh, situation occurred. Imagine an alternate occurrence rather than that situation occurring. And imagine if that situation had never occurred, what the effect would be on the present and the future. So imagine yourself in the now if that particular trauma had never happened to you. And then imagine what your future would be like. And at each stage of this visualization, send the healing symbol so that healing can occur. Now, what we're doing by doing this imaginative and visualization process is not forgetting the actual trauma, but distancing ourselves and detaching ourselves emotionally from it. So after this process, you will still remember what happened to you, but you will not feel any emotion when you do remember this experience. And it will also almost be like you are looking at the memory as if it was a movie on a TV screen, not reliving it and feeling the pain and continuously blocking um, certain areas of your life by keeping this painful memory there. Once you feel that you have completed this process, say a prayer of thanks and gratitude. Finally, ground yourself so that you can come back to reality and repeat the process if necessary. Not necessarily on the same day or even the same week, but whenever you feel like this um, scenario might be affecting you or bothering you, repeat the process. Healing is an ongoing process through life. And if it was a large trauma that you're going back and healing, you probably won't be able to heal it in one session alone. Ask for help from fellow Reiki masters or um, if you aren't a Reiki master yet and just a Reiki to ask for help from those who might have practiced more than you. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. There are people who will always be um, very willing to guide you and help you with your healing. Don't feel ashamed or worried or anxious about anything. Um, the main goal here, and as it is for everyone who is introduced to Reiki, is to help others and to heal them.